Thank you. Ahmed Fathi, Sphinx News. Uh, Ms. Patel, uh, with regard to the jurisdiction, uh, we have seen, for example, with the uh, U.S. Army personnel who were indicted in the Abu Ghraib uh, prison uh, uh, scandal, were tried by mil U.S. military courts, and they were convicted, and they served their prison uh, sentences. While in the other side, the uh, contractors from Blackwater, their case are still uh, presented to the civil courts. How can be such discrepancies, although both fall under U.S. Uh, jurisdiction? So, uh, a very interesting question. I mean, in fact, the jurisdiction is not so clear. Um, obviously, if you're a military person, you know, you're subject to the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and you can be tried under that, and that's what happened with the military personnel who were, uh, who were found guilty of the Abu Ghraib stuff. Um, if you're a civilian, your status is quite unclear. And what the United States has done is two things to try and close that gap. The first is that they passed a law called the Military Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Act. And what that act does is that it extends military jurisdiction to Department of Defense contractors um, operating with the U.S. forces. Um, there are questions as to whether that's constitutional, whether under the U.S. Constitution you can't actually bring any civilian under the, the military justice system, and that issue is not yet settled. The second thing that the United States has been trying to do is to pass a second statute, which is called the Civilian Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Act, which would then fill the gap that remains with the contractors who are out there who are not uh, associated with the combat mission. Now, this legislation was introduced in 2010, and it's been reintroduced this year, in 2011. There were hearings on it this summer. And so we'll have to see where that goes. I would point out, however, two things. One is that the civilian statute actually also uh, has an exemption for authorized intelligence activities, so there is a potential loophole over there as well. Um, and the second thing is that in civil litigation uh, involving uh, contractors, and particularly it's the case of um, – it's the Saleh case versus Titan – um, it's a civil lawsuit uh, brought by 250 Iraqi detainees alleging human rights violations by U.S. private contractors who provided interrogation and translation services at Abu Ghraib. And the civil case was dismissed in uh, 2009, I believe it was, on the grounds that the contractors were providing a combat function so that they had an immunity similar to that of the military. Uh, so obviously that's a big gap.